welcome to KU Padashala of University of Kerala, the online learning platform. Myself, Dr. S. M. Rafi, Associate Professor in Department of Aquatic Biology and Fisheries, University of Kerala. Today we will talk about the employment and entrepreneur opportunities for an aquatic biology or a fishery or an aquaculture graduates. Before I plunge into my topic, let me introduce my department. My department, the Department of Aquatic Biology, was started way back in 1938 during the erstwhile Travancore Kingdom. Later on, in 1972, with the recommendation of the then professor and head, the Patmasri Awadi, Dr. N. Balakrishnan Nair, uh, the MSc programs were started. And currently, it is the UGC, that means the University Grants Commission's uh, reputed center, that means Center of Advanced Study in Aquatic Biology and Fisheries, which plays a critical role in human resource development, in aquatic biology, aquaculture, ecology, limnology, and so on. So, coming to the subject, what are all the jobs that are hidden beneath for a fishery science graduate or an aquaculture graduate. To begin with that, let me introduce first what are all the uses of ocean to mankind. For every uses of ocean to mankind and Mother Earth, there lies the importance of the jobs for an aquatic biologist and a fishery graduates. So let me plunge into the subject. The uses of ocean, oceans are considered as the a savior of Mother Earth and mankind. And nowadays, especially the United Nations Millennium Decade for Sustainable Development, this decade is called as the Union, United Nations Millennium Decade for Sustainable Development, in which blue economy became a buzzword. This became the buzzword and this became the whistleblower of the day. That means to tap more resources, that means living, non-living resources, so also energy from the oceans in a sustainable or we can call a more judicious, responsible way of utilization of these resources. And for each use of the ocean, uh, there exists a lot of employment and entrepreneur opportunities. So oceans, I told you, they are the savior of mankind and Mother Earth. Why it is called as the savior of mankind and Mother Earth? Because they are the lifeblood of planet Earth and humankind. To my estimate goes nearly around 70 percentage of the ocean, the earth is covered by planet ocean that holds 97 percentage of the planet's water. And astonishingly more than 70 percentage of the world populace lives near to the coastal zone and that houses about more than 70 percentage of the world cities. Astonishingly 80 percentage of the life, 80 percent, I repeat 80 percentage of the life are beneath the waves and the tides that is in the ocean and no ocean no life that's a slogan because the oceans the minute organisms called as the phytoplankton minute microscopic plant organisms called as the phytoplankton they produces more than half of the oxygen in the atmosphere which is produced by the ocean equally absorb most of the carbon which are the noxious gas like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and it variants were absorbed through a process called as carbon sequestration that is blue carbon. So no matter how far away from your leaf, ocean plays a pivotal role in the life and livelihood of mankind. The air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you eat or the products that makes your life ease are derived or originated from oceans. Oceans are acts as the climate regulators of the world. They play a very particular role in maintaining global weather, climate, oxygen producer, carbon dioxide absorber, so and so and all. And especially a country like India, whose GDP is primarily depends or rely on agriculture, the success and failure of agriculture is directly linked to the monsoons. If the monsoon is success or failure, that way it affects the success and failure of the agriculture. So all this monsoonal process is controlled by a factor 
that is happening in the ocean, especially in the Pacific Ocean, called as El Nino and La Nino. If something goes wrong, that leads to excess rainfall, leads to floods, or leads to droughts or extreme droughts, which affects the agriculture. So that way, ocean acts as the climate regulator, and the chief food producer of agriculture is relies upon the process that takes place in the ocean. Though ocean occupies about 70% of the world, and the source of the lifeblood of Mother Earth and savior of mankind. But astonishingly, in our school curriculum and college curriculum, they are explained only less than 7%, though it occupies more than 7%, 70% of the planet. So coming to the uses of ocean, this I told you the ecological and environmental uses of ocean. Now we look into the other uses, the cheap and the main use of ocean are ocean services, the seafood. So marine fisheries plays a significant contributor to the nutritional, livelihood, trade and economic security to many maritime countries. And it is one of the cheapest producer of the proteinaceous seafood. Around 90 million tons of seafoods are captured globally every year and nearly 36 million people coastal populace in the form of fishers are directly linked to fisheries and equally an equal amount of uh, populace is linked on fisheries allied sectors and other employment avenues. So the opportunities for seafood for a graduate is they can go as teaching us their role, they can become a school teacher, tutor, academic academicians or professors. This is the teaching jobs lies for a fishery graduate. What are all the research avenues? They can go as uh, researchers or scientists in various fisheries related institutes like uh, Indian Council for Agricultural Research Institutes like uh, CMFRA, CBA, CFA, Central Institute of Fisheries, uh, Nautical Engineering and also Oceanography Institutes like uh, National Institute of Oceanography, National Institute of Ocean Technology, uh, INCOIS, International Center for Ocean Information Systems, so and so and on. Uh, equally, that means as scientists, then they can go as technical or consultant or administrators in state fisheries department, central fisheries and environment departments, banks, aquaculture, hatcheries, processing, seafood processing centers, and seafood aligned laboratories like the disease diagnosis laboratories, seafood quality assurance laboratory, so and so on. But all these jobs are related to fisheries and aquaculture. But there are lot many other sectors where the jobs are hidden for a fishery or an aquatic biology graduate. Once the thing is that you can become an entrepreneur so that you can earn yourself and you can provide employment to others. You can start your own uh, entrepreneurship firms like uh, hatcheries that produces the seeds or the young ones for the uh, aqua farming or you can start your own aqua farm or sea farming or even shroom farming business which is a promising multi-billion dollar industry and also you can start your own seafood processing centers not only that water quality labs disease diagnostics labs aqua feed section probiotics that is medicines and nutraceuticals for the uh, fishes you are growing it's a wonderful area aquaculture accessories like uh, aerators uh, tubes and other and other and food quality labs. You can start your own or you can uh, join as an employee in these firms. So here you can see the things, the hatchery, farms, seafood processing, all are uh, multi-billion dollar industries that promotes the scientific way of aquaculture. So this so far I talked is related to fisheries or aquaculture, the jobs, direct jobs. But there are other jobs hidden beneath for which you should know the other uses of ocean to mankind. And for each uses, I repeat, for each uses, there exists a lot of employment opportunities for a fishery graduate. I have a quick look at this slide, uh, the alternate avenues in blue economy. It's on coastal monitoring, polar ice monitoring, marine conservation policies and research, society and education pertaining to ocean, science and climate, marine food, natural resources like energy, oil and natural gas, marine navigation, water quality, safety and disaster management. Then naturally a question comes, how an aquatic biologist or a fishery graduates will get a job there? 
let me look for the uses one by one one is the ornamental fish sector ornamental like aquarium marine or freshwater aquariums that you can go as an employer you can go as an employee or you can start your own entrepreneurship business i can categorize the ornamental fish sector broadly as dead and life the dead means the artificial pot production and shell collection so and so and the life is a multi-million dollar industry where even some pair fishes a pair of fishes may cost more than a lakh like arona fish and all and all you might be knowing coming to these slides this is the dead uh, marine ornamental resources that means the dead ornamentals some molluscan shells say for example what you're seeing here is a shell called as the conus gloria manis gloria maris one shell is fetching more than a lakh for a shell collector and another uh, things like once uh, the sangaspiram or valambiri shang in malayalam the dextral one which is a matter of veneration for the hindus and it was our uh, erstwhile sim uh, simple for the erstwhile travancore kingdom so these are the dead industries live i can show you the sea horses uh, i uh, lovely put here as he suffers the delivery pain because here in the male he's having a brood pouch and the female will deposit the egg into the brood pouch of the male like a kangaroo and this the male gives young ones uh, give birth that means he suffers the delivery pain it is a wonderful ornamental fish but it is categorized in iucn endangered list Similarly, there are another happiest persons like the marine clownfish belongs to the uh, genus Amphiprion. Uh, I can tell they are the happiest person in the world because half of the life they become male and the rest of the life they become the female. So these are the ornamental fish industries. Coming to the other slides like uh, perclamenostrums or cleaner ras, they are said to be the doctors of the marine ecosystems because uh, the cleaner shrimp, what you're seeing here on the left hand side, they are said to be the marine dental doctor with a clinic. They remain in a coral reef rock and where the large fishes will come, they split open their mouth so that this young glassy shrimp go inside and clean the teeth like what a dentist do to us. Similarly, the small uh, fishes like a cleaner ras belongs to the species Lambroidus are said to be the marine dermatologist or the skin specialist. The fishes will be in queue sometimes on these fishes, near to these fishes and uh, they keep silently without doing any harm they keep the big fishes lay silently so that what happened the small fishes will come and they clean the ectoparasites waste dead cells and other uh, debris that are seen on the skin and the mouth and the gill region that way it cleans the things so these are all wonderful uh, marine ornamental fishes having high value what you're seeing here is also a beautiful fish called as lionfish tyrois volitans it looks very cute, but it's very notorious because all those bubbles what we are seeing as threads, BSA poison, uh, that means a toxin, which is said to be fatal. But still, uh, we are doing research on tapping drugs or uh, this pharmacological applications from these things. This is also another wonderful ornamental fish. So there you have an opportunities. The next is the production of valuable and value added products, especially from the low value or so-called trash fishes or the waste fishes. This is something like the slogan, uh, wealth from the waste. Nothing is a waste. You, we are generating wealth from the waste. Like uh, products like uh, fish body oil, liver oil, fish protein concentrate, fish silage, pickled surumi, breaded and battered products, fish scale collagen peptides, chitin and chitosan, and products from the seaweeds like agar agar, chitin, algin, carrageenan, etc. So, sustainable utilization of low value fishes or bycatch fishes is a, from comparatively a modern initiative for employment and entrepreneurship. Why I said this low value or bycatch or trade trash fishes? Because nearly one third of one fourth of the fish we are catching, we are not utilizing for human consumption. We are just throwing it back either to the sea or to the land that causes tremendous ecological problems so also economic problems to the country so why can't we use these resources so that the wealth can be generated out of this waste that is the concept which is catching up so understanding its importance FAO has emphasized that state should promote the use of bycatch to the extent that this is consistent with responsible fisheries management practice so all these products can be listed out here on the slide, can be made out and uh, people can start thinking of this as an entrepreneurship 
opportunities, especially products like chitin. What you're seeing here is the wonderful drug of the 21st century. Uh, chitin has uh, its own merits, many pharmaceutical, industrial, and other applications. It is said to be a wonderful drug for anti cholesterolic activities because it is an excellent fat adsorbent as well as absorbent. So, epidemic, especially global obesity, is now become a global pandemic. To curtail the problem of obesity, the better one is the waste wealth that is the chitin and chitosan generator out of the waste of the crabs and the prawns. Coming to other valuable and value added products, and say for example the chitin, it can be produced with there is no rocket science behind it. Uh, any person who knows a bit, bit chemistry and biology can do these things. Like only the three chemical process that is removing the minerals, demineralization, removing the proteins, deproteinization, and you will get the chitin. And once this chitin, if you remove the acetyl group, a process called as deacetylization, you should get the wonderful drug called as chitosan. So many areas, people started this as a small business venture and they are enjoying it. And equally, they can be made out with the help of microbes by employing fermentation technique. Fish body oil and liver oil. Comparatively, the fish oil present in the present day market are coming from European countries, that too from a costly table fish called as a salmon. But the same fish oil with improved qualities can be generated from the low-value fishes like uh, the sardines, mati in Malayalam. So they are enriched, these small fishes are enriched with uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, uh, especially omega-3 fatty acids, which is an excellent cardioprotectant that fight uh, your heart from the ailments. So also they are rich in vitamin and minerals. Fish protein concentrate is another one. That means at the first outset, we remove the fish oil. The left is subjected for the production of fish protein concentrate, which is an excellent nutraceutical, contains more than 80 percentage, which can be given for the children. So FAO has categorized, Food and Agriculture Organization categorized this fish protein concentrate or FPC as type A, B, and C. Type A having more than 80 percentage of protein, type B and C having comparatively less. And once this fish oil is produced, the rust is subjected to fish protein concentrate. And from the waste generated of this fish protein concentrate, you can make the last products called as the fish silage. Fish silage is a simple process that requires only less capital investment and bycatch species. So also the waste of the fish oil and fish protein concentrate produced, the raw waste material can be utilized for the production of silage, which is used in the uh, animal feed industries and post poultry industries. Equally, the rust can be used for the production of uh, fish meal for generating the fish feed and poultry feeds. So these are new areas. And similarly, fish body oil, I told you, uh, previously there was a court called uh, an apple a day, but keeps the doctor away. Now, uh, if, if the concept has been totally changed because the apple is minced or laced with so many insecticides and pesticides, if you, so if you take an apple a day, definitely you have to doctor, go doctor every day. So, but comparatively, I'm changing the proverb as sardines a day, mati keeps the doctor away. This low value fish has excellent uh, cardioprotectants like omega-3 fatty acids uh, that aids in uh, anti-aging tissue repair uh, regeneration. So also having many other uses. So the concept as the slide shows nothing is a waste. That is a buzzword of the day. Wealth from the waste, though it is like uh, searching diamond from the dust, but you definitely you will achieve it. Production of artificial pearls. Marine pearls. Marine pearls, imagine one pearl is fetching somewhere around 200 rupees to 2 lakhs rupees, depending upon the quality of the pearl, uh, which is taken from a marine organism called as a pearl oyster, belongs to the species Pinctada ficata, what you're seeing here. But because of the overexploitation of the pearls, for the pearl oysters, for the production of or utilization of pearl, pearls, their population were drastically removed and they are in naturally present. These pearl oyster birds were present in Gulf of Manna. That means the stretch between uh, India and Sri Lanka is called as the Gulf of Manna. But because of the over exploitation of the pearls, oysters for the production of pearls, their population declined drastically. But hats off to uh, Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute, Tutikor in CMFRA. They have developed the artificial pearl production technology and many people are venturing into this business as a thing for which a graduate can also, fishery graduate can also rely. Production of other valuable products like a seaweed based one, agar, agar, alginin, carraginin, used in seafood, used in food processing industries, baking industries, microbiological purposes, all, all taken from the small seaweeds. Similarly, ampergris. 
Ambergris is a costliest of uh, the costliest perfumes used in the world used uh, a waste product from the whales called as ambergris. So, of course, drugs from the sea, that means marine pharmacological research is compiled to a new avenue started 10 or 15 years back. Around the world, people, scientists, academicians are concentrating on uh, the concept marine pharmacology because most of the flora and fauna of the marine, marine systems, they are having excellent bioactive compounds which can be utilized or which can be derived for the synthesis of many medicines so as to cure many diseases. World Health Organization is pumping crores and crores of rupees towards this research. Similarly, our Indian Council for Medical Research also. So there are many compounds like Sarconotidin, Cytabarin, Trabactadin are produced from many marine organisms and uh, many are on the pipeline. So if you want to become a millionaire, do marine pharmacological research and if you found out a suitable drug from the marine organisms or the animals or the plants that can cure uh, against the pandemic COVID-19 or dreadful diseases like cancer or um, AIDS, you can simply patent it and you can become a millionaire. That lies the importance of marine pharmacological research. But so far as I told you, it's employment as well as entrepreneurship avenues. But for uh, an entrepreneur, you need some winsome qualities as this slide shows. You need a vision. Vision has to be derived as a plan. Plan has to set as goals. And if you need a teamwork and you have self-motivation as well as you should motivate others. And if your ideas goes well, success is yours. So entrepreneurship is the new avenues. And it's government, both the central and the state government is pro for developing small scale business ideas, innovations, entrepreneurships, especially there is a ministry called as a ministry of micro, small and medium enterprises. They are giving many loans, subsidies, without any collateral securities. So the, the, gone are the days getting loan for starting business was a, a, was a big bottleneck. Now it's not the case. Now the government itself has a ministry called as micro, small and medium enterprises that are providing various sorts of loans. Department of Science of Technology, they have startup missions. So for doing a business for an young entrepreneur, it is not a havoc no more, but now it's a heaven. The climate has changed in the Indian and international scene and everybody is looking for entrepreneurship and innovative programs. Similarly, there's another program called as Aspire, a scheme for promoting innovation and rural entrepreneurship to promote rural livelihood incubators, which is a technology business incubator and that generates the funds. Startup mission, Mudra scheme loans are there. Mudra banks and all Mudra loan schemes give startup loans for an entrepreneur from 10 lakhs to even 50 lakhs without any collateral securities. In this line for exclusively fisheries and oceanographic businesses, there is a scheme called as PMMSY, that is Pratana Mandari Malshya Sambada Yojana to boost the production and export fishery sector and aquaculture. Nearly 20,000 crores, I repeat, 20,000 crores are reserved for this scheme for 2020 to 2025. 20,000 crores, that's a big money for uh, starting businesses, aquaculture, fisheries related activities and enhancing the production so that uh, we can satisfy, so we, uh, we can satisfy our uh, million uh, populace, their nutritional requirements and to eradicate the poverty and hunger. Then comes to the other uses of ocean to mankind, which is nowhere related to a biologist, but a biologist and a fishery graduate will get a job. I told you, can told you as this slide looks, oceans are said to be the international highways for trade and tariff. Nearly 80% of the world trade and tariff travels through the oceans. The question comes is, shall a fishery graduate, shall an aquatic biologist will get an opportunity here? then you might be uh, wondering how yes i will come to that later the next importance of oceans are they are the repositories of minerals metals and costly rarers daily the simple mineral you are using the sodium chloride common salt or the table salt till the other valuable compounds or minerals like manganese nodules magnesium cobalt copper zinc so also rare elements like titanium zirconium, plutonium, which are having radioactive things and which is used for production of various things. So our region, especially uh, from Koilon, from Kayankulam 
till to the Tamil Nadu Tirutura Pundi, which are rich in uh, rare earth minerals. That is why we are having titanium factories here, rare earth factories here, they produce very malleable compounds. So the question comes is, shall a fishery graduate, will I get an opportunity here? My answer is yes, a big yes. I will tell you the big yes at the end. The next use of ocean is, ocean are the warehouses of oil and natural gas resources, petroleum hydrocarbons. So many of the petroleum hydrocarbon resources are dwindling at a faster pace. So the entire world, so also the India have to look our own oceans, especially countries like India, we are best out because we are having a coastline of more than 8,000 square kilometers, 8,000 kilometers with more than 3.18 million uh, square kilometers of exclusively economic zone, which only few countries have. If you tap resources like uh, oil, natural gas, uh, or other energy from this, we will become a superpower. This off late the research is pumping towards uh, drilling and gaining oil and natural gas from these things. We have a place called as Mumbai High, off Mumbai, where we are having oil drilling platforms. Similarly, in Nagapatnam and Karakal region of Tamil Nadu, we are tapping natural resources, I mean natural gases, especially methane and methane-based gases from the ocean. The question comes is, shall a fishery graduate will get an opportunity here? Again, my answer is a giant yes. The next two for the ocean is ocean for renewable energy. Now, now we everybody we are talking about the clean, clean and green energy, because uh, we the Kerala state is basically rely on hydroelectric projects for getting energy, electricity. But uh, because of siltation, dam, unscientific construction of the dams, it affects the ecology, leads to frequent landslides, rampant weather and rainfall. Uh, we cannot uh, rely totally on the hydroelectric projects. If you look at the other projects for generating electricity like the coal or the thermal or the other one or radioactive substances like the one you are having in Kunangulam, uh, but the ecological consequences especially uh, if some disaster happens, uh, the magnitude of disaster will be more. So that's why now we are talking about uh, tapping clean and green energy like uh, energy from the wind, solar, light and also of course from the ocean. Power from the land-based activities are in chaos nowadays. So India being a power deficient country, if any country wants to become a superpower, they should become first self-sufficient in the power. So we have to tap our ocean in full swing. I repeat, 8,000 kilometers of uh, coastline with 3.18 million square kilometers of oceanic area is EEZ, exclusive economic zone. If we tap it by using, make clean and green energy from the tides and the waves. There is a proverb called as time and tides wait for none. It will come on and keeps on. Similarly, the waves never ends. And currents, ocean and underwater currents. And comparatively, another area called as OTEC, that means Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion, OTEC. We are generating electricity through a process called as OTEC in uh, Andamans, so also in Lakshadweep Islands. So if all these 8,000 kilometers of area are utilized completely for uh, tapping energy by putting turbines or other uh, hydroelectric turbines, we can become a super. Of course, there are some hurdles are there. Fouling will be there, boring will be there, corrosion will be there. But countries like France, in France, there's a place called as uh, Bay of Fundy, where they are generating electricity by using the tidal energy and wave energy. The question comes is, shall a fishery graduate will get an opportunity here? Again, my answer is yes. Desalination. Previously, there was a saying that if a third world will come, it will come for, uh, it will be a war for water. But I am sure that uh, a third world, world war will not come for water. Because uh, now we are tapping our ocean resources for converting the salt water to sea water. I repeat, converting the salt water to sea water through a process called as desalinization. Uh, by using the reverse osmosis technology. Once Chennai, the drinking water was a great bottleneck and uh, now 10 years back uh, uh, they started a desalination plan where the ocean water, the sweet water, salt water is taken and converted as sweet water through a process called as reverse osmosis and uh, more than 80 percentage of the Chennai city's water, drinking water need is satisfied by this desalination plan. 
Similarly, our islands like Lakshadweep, Andamans, we have desalination plants. And especially in the arena that nearly 4,500 kids are dying every day around the globe due to impairment quality of drinking water or poor water. The question comes, a like fishery graduate will get an opportunity here. Again, it's a big yes. And of course, for the naval activities, as you might be knowing well from our days hold, our history, once we had a 10,000, um, uh, I mean, nearly, nearly um, uh, 2,000 years back, we had a mighty navy for the Chola dynasty. And we grown up to Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Maldives, Madagascar, and all, and they constructed their, expanded the Chola emperor, expanded their dynasty. And now we are also having, it. India is one among the first, uh, third uh, countries who are having a good naval power. We are, we are in the first third having fully equipped with the naval activities and naval power because three sides of our water, three sides of our borders are covered by water and we are having a strong, mighty navy. The question comes is, shall a fishery graduate will get an opportunity here? It's again the yes. The next important use is the marine tourism. Many of the countries like Thailand or Philippines, their exclusive income is based on the marine and coastal tourism. And states like Goa and places like Kerala in like Kovalam, Varkala and all, their main source of income is the coastal and marine based tourism. That includes surfing, sailing, swimming, all and all and all and all. The question comes is, shall we get a fishery graduate, get an opportunity in the marine or coastal tourism sector? So, so far I told you, in navigation or transportation, naval activities, ocean energy, tapping energy from electricity from the ocean, oil and natural gases, other minerals, marine tourism, how a fishery or aquatic biologist will get. The answer is the this slide. In the areas like navigation, minerals, metals and rivers, oil and natural gas, energy, drinking water, marine tourism, naval activities. Because all this areas one way or other they requires an environmental managers or an ecosystem experts if you want to start a new venture you need an environmental manager which should be an aquatic biologist or a fishery graduates they can go as environmental scientists or a scientist so for example all the sectors they need scientists which is about you should be a biologist too so the problem is the biofowlers and the borers which are minute organisms belongs to the novel invertebrate groups like a seal and rates peripherans mollusks crustaceans, echinoderms and all, they will go and attach to the things. That is why we cannot make turbines, we, because all these organisms, or if you put some marine coastal structures after some time, so many minute organisms will come and attach, leads to so many problems. And so far there is no permanent solution for the biofouling and boring. That's why million crores of rupees and dollars are pumped into research and so far there is no solution. That is why Navy, they have a wing called as a DRDO, I will come to it a bit later. Uh, they are doing uh, solutions for this, crores of rupees on biofouling research. And you can work there in all these fields as researchers, as scientists, as ecobiologists. And also, of course, all this area requires a water quality analysis, which should be a biologist. And also microbiology in all the fields like marine tourism, drinking water, you need a marine microbiologist who know on the qualitative and qualitative assessment, where you can go as a researcher, scientist, hydrobiologist, and marine microbiologist. All these fields requires, especially naval activities. There is a defense DRDO that is called as the Defense Research and Development Organization of our uh, Indian Defense System. They deals with all the research pertaining to uh, defense, artillery, arms, ammunition, other healthcare things, foods. All these things they are doing research. And they have institutes like uh, NPOL, National Physical Oceanography Limited, and international institutes like uh, USA's famous NOAA. All these things they need a biologist and a special aquatic biologist for dealing the problems like biofouling, deep scattering layer, harmful algal blooms or the red tides, bioremediation, especially this is the buzzword, echo restoration and bioremediation is the buzzword of the day. Then uh, finding single cell proteins and nutraceuticals, where a biologist's role is very important, especially an aquatic biologist, a fishery graduate. So you have opportunities not only in the fisheries and aquaculture line, but in naval, navigation, oil and natural gas, electricity, 
industries, marine tourism, a biologist is required. And last but not the least, they can go in international sectors like uh, they can go as uh, international civil servants. That means not IAS, this is ICS, international civil servants working in United Nations, various bodies pertaining to ocean, food, ecology, environments like uh, FAO, UNEP, UNDP, UNESCO and all uh, you can go as an opportunities where an aquatic biologist or a fishery graduates is very much required and imagine the starting salary is somewhere around uh, 3.5 lakhs equally as administrators in state and central government uh, sectors like ministry of earth science that deals with ocean ministry of environment and forest similarly uh, ICR institute deals with the fisheries and oceanography then uh, pollution control boards of state and central where you have opportunities if nothing clicks you can start your own NGOs as the other revenues you can start your own NGOs world famous NGOs like uh, Emma Samina and Research Foundation, a tree, a sugar tree where uh, aquatic biologist is required and it is a highly paid highly paid job you can go as environmental specialist experts EIA specialist because any country any firm any industry wants to start they have to start and EIA studies where you can do the things. Remote sensing is one wonderful area where we can shine well and satellite oceanography. Ocean modeling again these are all the uh, new generation talks uh, like uh, oil spill modeling, fishery modeling, ecological modeling have tremendous opportunities for a fishery graduates and also you can go as banks like uh, agri or aquaculture banks like NABARTS or other um, banks you can go and also eco remediation and bio remediation jobs which is the future of the next so that's why i categorize my talk as the ocean as the savior of mother earth and mother mankind ocean has many ecological environmental uses to the earth so also many uses to the mankind and for each use not only fishery or aquaculture but for the other sectors like uh, navigation naval coastal tourism uh, production of minerals, metals, uh, dryers, oil and natural gas, all these fields a biologist is required and the role, role is important. So this is what, uh, so don't become a frog in the well, keep on opening your eyes and uh, select fishery graduation as your topic and these are all the opportunities and hidden opportunities. So save ocean, ocean will save us, protect ocean, ocean will protect us. Conserve ocean, ocean will serve us. Learn from ocean, earn from ocean. Ocean lives forever, let's love it forever. So here I stop, uh, I'm just placing my email ID, so also my handphone number. Thank you very much.